All right, we'll go ahead and start with questions for GM head coach Derek Fisher. Eli, can you, um, I mean, I don't need to look up there, I guess, but like it's. Rashawn Haylock with Spectrum. Hey, coach. Hey, Rashawn. Congrats on the win. Um, Thank you. It, it looked fourth quarter, especially towards the end there, it looked like you were kind of going defensive with the lineups. What did you see from uh, Taya? And Nia out there, um, as you guys were able to put some stops together uh, defensively late in this one. Yeah, no, that, um, that's you know definitely what the the mindset was in that first half. Uh, the lineup uh, that that they put out with uh, Rebecca Allen, uh, Ben Nigelani, Wickham, Sabrina, you know that combination of players and, and only one big in the middle really caused us problems with. <clears throat> you know, how are we going to match up? Uh, and, and so they, you know, they hit 10 threes in the first half and uh, you know, we, it took a while for us to kind of figure out which lineup we could go to that would allow us to get stops defensively, but also uh, offensively be able to still move the scoreboard. Uh, so that's what we were trying to do there in, in, in that fourth quarter. And ultimately the, the decision was really that, you know, the, which we know we can do, uh, but it's just trusting it again. Uh, is putting NECA on, you know, on perimeter players and wing players when we need to, uh, which then allowed us to get Shanae on the court uh, to be, you know, the, the presence in the middle uh, defensively in terms of rebounding uh, and then also, you know, playing in the interior offensively. Uh, so it, that, that group deserves a lot of credit for putting us in position to, to have a chance to win this game today. Michelle Vopel, ESPN. Yeah, Coach Fisher, can you sort of give your assessment of how you thought Shanae looked? And, and also, you know, you guys have won all your games since uh, since the Olympic break and finally kind of have more of your team together. Can can you just address that and how things are starting to click for you guys? Yeah, I mean, Shanae, um, I mean, you know, it's hard to describe what, you know, what players go through when, uh, you know, they've been out for an extended period of time and, um, I think for Shanae in particular, who, you know, has established herself as, um, you know, a woman uh, that has a, a platform that's larger than basketball. I think sometimes the assumption is that this is not important to her. Uh, you know, this is not something that she's as interested in. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always ready to give her so much credit uh, for putting the work in that it takes to be able to come out after being out as long as she has and only playing three games since 2019 um, to be able to come out and help her team, you know, in the way that she did this afternoon, uh, really happy for her. Uh, and she makes a difference, you know, when, when she's healthy and on the court, it allows us to do some different things on both ends of the court. Uh, and then just, you know, our team collectively, I think we went into the Olympic break you know, just kind of running on fumes, uh, the injuries that really decimated us. But that group, I think we formed a level of grit and, and toughness about our team uh, that we've carried over into this part. And then when you add NECA and you add Christy, you know, now today you add Shanae, um, it, it gives us some additional depth, some, some efficiency on the offensive end that we missed at times and combine that with the toughness and the grit and you know, the defense that, that causes problems and disrupts teams. And it just gives us a better chance uh, each night. So, uh, you know, proud of the group for continuing to, to hang in and find ways to stay together. Um, and, and hopefully we can continue to do that uh, along on this road trip. Sabrina Merchant, SB Nation. Hey, Derek, congrats on the win. Um, Thanks, Sabrina. You mentioned, you know, the defensive lineups you were able to run out in that fourth quarter. And I just wanted you to explain how important Nia is, you know, in terms of yeah. helping on the backside, especially when NECA's out there on the perimeter. Yeah, no, I, you know, Nia's, Nia's been asked to make, um, you know, a pretty significant adjustment where uh, in, in the first part of the season, due to the injury, she primarily played uh, more of the four position, quote unquote. Um, and so, you know, guarding bigger players, uh, you know, our pick and roll coverages, uh, the things that we did offensively, she was doing it all from different places in different spots. So, um, you know, she's been adjusting to playing more of the wing position. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about it. Uh, it, it gives us the additional size at the wing spot uh, that's going to be important for us to be successful 
and match up against teams across this league. Uh, the way she rebounds the basketball, the strength that she plays with uh, is really good for us uh, to be on the court. It takes pressure off of Brittany Sykes, always having to guard bigger players at the wing spot. We can move her to the two at times. Uh, and so, again, I think it just goes back to the depth of, of having NECA back, having Shanae back out there today. Uh, it, it gives us more versatility. Uh, and Nia's game really suits being able to move around in, in different ways. Uh, and she was strong out there today. And, we, you know, we, we feel really good for her because, you know, we basically ran her into the ground the first 19 games of the season. Uh, and so now that she's actually able to get some rest uh, during the course of the game, you know, she can play fresh, she can be more dynamic, uh, and, and those are all good things for her and for us. Abby with h &B Media. So, Coach, um, all right, Pat. can you uh, talk about that third quarter um, there, you know, when they really start to uh, hit some threes? Can you talk about your ability to uh, trust your offense and not, like, chase those um, same shots but just stick to um, the looks and the uh, sets that you want to get to? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's difficult to do that in the moment. Um, I, it's a great question. I think it, you know, during the course of the game, as you go through, you know, runs and, and highs and lows, uh, you, you know, finding a way to trust, you know, in who you are and, and what you do and the things that, uh, you know, you feel like will make you more successful as a team, you know, that's, that's what we tried to do. Uh, and so in the third quarter, uh, you know, as, as they continued to make some shots there, we still had to trust that we were getting good enough looks offensively on our end. We just needed to convert them. Uh, and so, you know, finally, as some of our perimeter players were able to get to the front of the basket uh, and convert some of the layups that they missed early in the game. Um, again, I thought that, uh, you know, NECA and Shanae working together uh, off of, you know, some of the, the high-low opportunities that we had offensively, uh, I thought Christy hit a, a, a timely three-point basket there in the third quarter that also kind of, uh, you know, kept us close. Uh, I think the, the score was 66 to 57 or 58, and she had a basket that kind of, you know, they had made a couple shots and they were kind of starting to go on a run. Um, so I think our team is understands that we can hang our hat on our defense most nights. Uh, and then if we over the course of the game can find a way to start to make some baskets. Uh, we don't have to throw out the whole game plan. Uh, and, and that's what happened for us tonight. And, uh, and then our defense again was able to help us bring it home. David Yapkowitz with Next Hoops. Hey coach, um, you know, uh, speaking of the defense, you know, looking at those last two games as we, uh, you know, those games came down to you needed some big offensive possessions, you know, to help pull those out tonight, you know, a little bit different, you know, you had a turnover, you were able to force a turnover late in the game, you know, Brittany Sykes obviously came up with that big block at the end there. Um, does it give you a little confidence knowing that, hey, you know, maybe you guys can pull out some of these really close wins in multiple ways, you know, like, say, if you need a big bucket, you know, you can get that or if you need a big defensive stop, you know, you're able to get that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great feeling. I think, you know, defensively, uh, I feel like we've, you know, our confidence and our trust, um, you know, has has been there for quite some time. I, I think our team recognizes that is a, a significant part of our identity. Uh, and and we, we think that uh, you, even though you need offense, right, you, you know, in order to win at the highest levels, you're going to have to defend. So, um, you know, I think we're confident on that end that we can get the stops that we need to, whether we're ahead or behind, we can get the stops that will still put us in position to secure the game. Uh, and we just have to continue, especially if we have a different lineup on the court uh, than we've been playing with, right? To, with Christy not on the court in the fourth quarter, you know, who, what other perimeter players can we put in position to be successful outside of Erica Wheeler? Um, and then, you know, we want to play through NECA at times, you know, what's going to be the best way to do that with if we have a different finishing lineup. Um, so that's my job to, to try and help our players figure some of those things out. Um, but but I, I think to your question, uh, if we continue to develop confidence that we can score when we need to score, um, I, I think that'll help us go a long way. Time for one more with Coach John W. Davis, Winsider. Coach, congrats on the win. Thanks, John. I, I wanted to ask you about this. So right now the Sparks have moved into eighth. 
And from my calculations, you control your own destiny when it comes to the playoffs now. How important is that with nine games to go? And just the idea that, you know, there's a possibility that you can move up even further in the standings and maybe even host a playoff game. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that's that's the trick in this life, right, is um, to, to not necessarily wait or rely on these external things uh, or external validation from other sources. Um, Cause at the end of the day, like, you know, we're always in control of our own destiny and we're, we're more guilty as I think as a team and, and just as people to we give away that power and that belief that it's something else that is the reason why. Um, when it really rests in our hands and in our heart, you know, in our spirit. And when you talk about it in the context of, of, of a team, uh, it, it's, it's us. It's not the opponent. It's not the referees. It's not the fans. It's not the schedule. Um, we are in control of our ability to make the right decisions, to show the type of discipline that you need to show in order to win. So in the standings, it says one thing, but the only way to get into that position is to to carry yourself in the way that you, you control your own destiny. You control the reality that you live in. Um, and so, uh, you know, what the standing say shouldn't really necessarily change our approach. Most of the time it does, cause you know, we're human beings, but it shouldn't. So we, we just have to still, uh, you know, I think keep our head focused on the, the, the situation and the moment that's right in front of us. And we're fortunate to, complete this game with the win, uh, especially under the circumstances, not knowing whether we'd even get a chance to play this game today. Uh, and so now uh, hopefully we can get out safely, people can get home safely. And then uh, the only thing we can really manage from here is, is the Washington Mystics and, and we'll go from there. Thank you, coach. Thanks. Shanae Agumake will be next. <sighs> Questions for Chinea Agumike. We will start with Chris Camello, Nightcast Media. Hey, Chinea, welcome back. Uh, Chris, are you there? Uh, uh, out of play. You just, you just kind of get back into the rhythm of things. Sorry, Chris, can you start that one over? Oh. Yeah, I think my screen froze up. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so how did you feel playing? Uh, was there any... I'm assuming he's asking, hey, Chris, about my, I'm playing in my knee. Uh, felt really good out there. Gotcha. I'm just going to go with how I felt being out there in my knee. Uh, felt really great out there. The first three minutes was like, oof. <laughs> As every player just sort of deals with, you know, a long extended break. But then after that, I was able to just sort of feel like myself again. And, you know, my teammates give a, uh, me so much confidence. They know my journey has been, you know, <laughs> a long journey. But this is a special group. And, of course, to be out there with my sis again and to do some of the things that we've always talked about and now to actually execute on them. Uh, it just felt good. So today, today was a great day. I was going to say a good day, but today was a great day. Michelle Vopel, ESPN. Yeah. Um, Shanae, first off, so great to see you back out there. Congrats. Um, can you, can you kind of just give us a sense of what is, what comes back the quickest, you know, when you've been off, because obviously you didn't get to play last year either. What comes back the quickest and um, and what is it that, you know, you still sort of have to work on and, and also do you kind of have a, a, an idea in terms of, of a minutes limit that you're going to have coming up? Hey, Michelle, I wish I could have seen you uh, here, but, you know, it's been crazy these last 24 hours. Uh, you know, I think the thing that the hardest thing is just getting the pace of the game back because you can do practice, you can do drills, and I've been doing all of it. We, I haven't been able to play five on five based on our circumstances, right? And so, because uh, we're in the middle of a huge road trip and then we came off of, you know, three games at home back to back to back. And so it just was being confident and knowing that all my training and preparation for the last few months will come through. And so I guess it's just the rhythm thing now, just getting the flow of the game. Uh, this amazing group has, you know, hung through it 
uh, th the last few months and now just getting that chemistry back with my teammates as well, just hearing each other's voices and communicating. And then uh, what was the final? Oh, what was the last one? Well, just in terms of, do, do, are you sort of on a minutes limit? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm definitely on a minutes restriction. Uh, I played three in the first you know, quarter and I had to joke to fish because I was like, ooh, let me get my lungs. I was like, you gonna put me back in? Like, I'm ready. <laughs> And so I was glad to get another run at it, but I knew I was not going to get um, extended minutes because, you know, everyone wants just to be careful. Um, and so, yeah, definitely on a minutes restriction, I think probably for a little while until, you know, things ramp up and they, they get the feedback. But honestly, I feel great, which makes me feel great. Good to hear. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Rashawn Haylock with Spectrum. Hey, Janae, welcome back. Nice seeing you out there. Um, what, was, what was kind of the most difficult part about going through all this for you? I know you're obviously missing all of last season. You come back, play a little bit this year, then, you know, get re-injured. What, what was the toughest challenge for you? Hey, Sean, um, the hardest thing was just being patient and trusting the process. As cliche as it sounds, it's annoying. Um, because I think, you know, a lot of times, People see, I guess, me doing other things, but like, this is my heart and soul. This is my love hoops playing and especially playing with my sister and sisters. So I think just being patient, trusting in the work that I put in the gym and, you know, knowing that everyone has seen uh, Coach Fisher and my family here, you know, the journey has been, it's like the time was now and I was really grateful for that. So I think that was probably the biggest thing that got me through just being, being patient and understanding that, it's gonna be on, you know, its own timeline, not the one I want it to be, but the one that worked for everyone and for this team. And so that's sort of the mindset that I've been approaching. Like, honestly, I've been waiting. I'm like, what game, which game? And so when I got the green light, I was like, thank you, Lord. And I think that's the best feeling, you know, when something's gone, you miss it more. And that I've, I missed it a lot. And that's why I'm grateful to have even played what, like 15, 10, 15 minutes or something like that. Miriam Swanson, LA Daily News. Hey, Shanae, welcome back. Hey, Miriam. Uh, hey, so uh, obviously you've been waiting to get back and waiting to get back. Um, and it seemed like today was sort of <laughs> hit and miss or hit or touch and go as far as whether you guys would even get to play. Um, what was that whole environment like, you know, being in an empty arena and the weather and, and this whole experience? Yeah, I was just like, oh man, I finally get the green light to play and then a hurricane's coming. I was like, really? <laughs> Like what in the world? This, you can't drop this up. But I think that was a silver lining, like still being able to play and play in Barclays. This is, you know, a new environment, even though there were, I was just happy that the, the rest could hear us the whole time. Like there were no crowd, right? So uh, honestly, when we just, you know, when we play as a team, we tune out all the distractions. And so the beauty of today was just that I was able to play, you know? And so, and we got a win. So it's like icing on the freaking cake. And so, yeah, that's just been the 24, it's been a nuts 24 hours being here in New York with Henry. Um, but I think coming out of the situation, my gosh, I feel super blessed. Time for a couple more with Janae, Sabrina Merchant, SB Nation. Hey Janae, good to see you. You look good out there. Hey Sabrina. Um, I'm curious, how do you feel like the team has grown since the last time you were able to play back in May until now? Resilience and composure. That is how our team has grown. I think people underestimate the fact that we have so many new pieces. If you look at the 2019 team, it was just myself and NECA that remained from that team. Um, KT coming back, obviously she's familiar, but this is a new team. And I think over the course of the season, things that might have broken us early are not breaking us now. And I think we're realizing how, how to play with fight. And it's been fun because um, yeah, I, I think, Everyone was making fun of me. Got a flagrant and freaking <laughs> my first game back. And I think that was it. Like being so grateful for this opportunity and fighting. And that's our team is full of fighters. I mean, we are a very interesting bunch. And I think that's what sort of carries us through with energy. So yeah, the biggest thing has been the resilience and composure of the squad and not letting things break us um, and learning everything on the fly in this unique season. Last one for Chennai, John W. Davis, Winsider. Janae, what's going on? How you feeling? What up, John? What's up? What's up? So for the record, I just want to say I'm looking forward to you shooting some threes because I saw you doing it pregame. <laughs> but then past that, 
How do you feel about the Sparks controlling your own destiny when it comes to the playoffs now? I think it's just one game at a time. Uh, and, you know, I, I think everyone's working on themselves. And I think it shows as a collective with how we've treated coming out of the break in the last four wins. And so just finding that maturity as a unit, leaning on our veterans and Coach Fisher, uh, his experience, I think that everyone is becoming who they need to be and it's helping our team as a unit. So I don't even think about the playoffs. I think about the next matchup and, you know, surrendering myself to that, that opportunity. And I think every player on this team sort of has that special gift of being present. Coach Fisher talks about it all the time. You know, we are in LA. There's a lot of things that could be going on, but when we step on the court, whether it's practice or the game, we know exactly where we're at and who we're with and what our goals are. And so I think that is what is finally translating to us, you know, being there for each other when it matters most, whether we're down 10, whether we're down two or whether we're up 10. Uh, that's just the energy we're on. And so y'all, it's been real. It's been really fun. Um, and I'm glad to be back. So I appreciate everyone's patience and riding with us. Uh, really excited about the next opportunity. So let's just get there. Lord Jesus help us. So. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thanks, Janae. All right, we'll get started. Rashawn Haylock with Spectrum. Hey, Erica, congrats on the win. Appreciate it, um, man. You've had, you've had a couple ones to go down to the wire here, but you've shown some resolve you know, coming out of the break to be able to end up on the right side of these ones. How would you care to rise today's win? Uh, we've been closing out some close ones lately. Um, I think like um, Sinead said, just composure. Um, having KT and NECA back is a sense of comfort. You know, those two of our leaders. So just having them on the floor and we just trusting each other, you know, and we closing our games. So I think that's what we did. Just trust each other, trust coach that he's making the right play calls and, you know, just making the plays to win games. Michelle Vopel, ESPN. Yeah, Erica, can you kind of, you know, it, you guys have been waiting sort of to have this group together and it's been, uh, you know, it's been a long wait and you've kind of been uh, one of the rocks there the whole time. Can you sort of talk about how good it feels to, to look around and see, you know, both the Gomuke sisters have Christy back? I mean, what is that like for you, you know, just to, to know that you have those guys back out on the court? Um, definitely give me more confidence um, to know that I don't have to do as much. I can get off the ball at some points, but I know I still have to control the game. But just to have them back with their scoring ability, their ability to play the game, their IQ, it just helps a lot. It makes the game so much easier. So just to have all three of them back, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy. I'm honored. Thanks. I appreciate it. Got it. Miriam Swanson, LA Daily News. Hey, Erica, congrats on the win. Good play. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you about Shanae in particular, having her back. Um, she, she obviously is a personality. <laughs> What's it like to have her back on the floor? I know she's probably been pretty present with you guys throughout this whole recovery process too. For me, honestly, Shanae never left because she's always around. Her presence is very known, whether we're in the locker room, in practice, um, even in the airport, you know, her presence is known. So um, just to have her on the court, I'm just happy that she's back on the court just for herself. She's been working hard to get back. So for her to get the minutes that she got today, I'm definitely proud of her, all the, you know, the work she did to get back to us. Chris Camello, Nightcast Media. Yeah, Erica, just to, uh, first of all, it's a great game uh, as well. Um, can, can you hear me okay, by the way? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. No, no, because my connection was bad on the last one. So, um, yeah, so just talking about your chemistry with uh, Shanae, I did notice, like, you guys did run a little bit of high screen and roll. What was that like? And uh, do you think that's something else you guys could add uh, add a different – that dynamic to the offense? I mean, I have chemistry with all my players, you know, especially my post players because they're going to work the hardest for you. They're going to rebound the ball. That's a tough job to do. So, um, it's just a play call. You know, we, we, we tried to exploit New York – with the um, pick and roll because we knew they were switching and, you know, they get confused sometimes. So that's just was a play call, but I'm pretty comfortable with all my teammates. Time for a couple more with Erica, Sabrina Merchant, SB Nation. 
Hey, Erica, congrats on the win. Um, I wanted to ask about the lineup that you guys closed with, with Neca, Nia, Taya, Brittany, and yourself. Uh, what is it that makes you guys so dominant defensively? Um, Nia is a great defender, you know, and um, you know what Sinead brings. Slim is long. You know, I've, I've been aggressive this, the whole game, just getting into um, offensive players. So I think it was just fish call, you know, so I don't think it was nothing to it. <laughs> You know, we, there was just a lineup that he wanted, and that's what he went with. David Yapkowitz with Next Hoops. Hey, Erica. How you you know, um, before uh, you guys went out on the road, um, you know, Coach Fisher, Christy, NECA were all talking about um, the need to bring that, that same toughness that you guys were able to close out those Atlanta games with out mm -hmm. on the road. You know, now you guys found yourself in, you know, similar pressure situation on the road, um, you know, and we're able to pull it off. Um, just what did you see out there from the group in terms of that mental toughness? And, you know, how do you think this is going to help carry over to the rest of this road trip? I think that's, um, that's key, you know, we we on the road for 15 days, so mentally you have to be sharp. And to start it off with a win, it's, it's going to carry over and it's going to be good for us. But just that's just the mentality that we want in LA. That nobody just not going. When we play them, they're not going to just do us any kind of way. We're going to bring a fight. It's not going to be easy to score against us. And I think that everybody display that. Um, think about Fisher and him as a coach and a player. That's what he brings. So we just a reflection of him. We'll do one more with Erica John W. Davis, Winsider. Hey, Erica, congrats on the great game. Thank you. I wanted to ask you about the playoffs. Um, what's your feelings on the Sparks controlling your own destiny now, um, being that you're in the eighth seed and can possibly move up? And then also personally to you, what would it mean for you to make the playoffs? Because again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you've ever been in the playoffs, right? I made the playoff once when in my once, first okay. year. Yeah, in Indiana, I made it once. Okay. But for me, I, um, I don't think none of us thinking that had that far. We have DC, and that's all we're worrying about. And I think with that focus that everybody has in the locker room is just next team. We're not looking far down the line when we play in September and where we're going to be at. Because when you start doing that, um, you kind of lose sight of what's the real goal is. And it's the goal is to, you know, make sure we prepare for each team each night. So we got DC. So that's what we're worrying about. And for me, I think that's the goal. I came, that's why I came to LA. I want to make the playoffs. I want to be able to feel what that feels like. Thanks, Erica. All right.